Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 370, CBD, cannabinoid, is legal, safe, and non-prescription. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We are going to be discussing something called CBD, which is available uh, non-prescription over-the-counter as a supplement around the United States. It's legal in every state. But it's something that a lot of people don't know about or about which there's a good deal of confusion because the CBD comes from the hemp plant. Uh, it comes from the male version of the hemp plant where the female version of the hemp plant, marijuana, uh, is the same originating plant. And people only seem to know about marijuana and the active ingredient in marijuana, which is THC, which gets into the fat tissues of your brain and makes you high and you know causes all these problems, makes you hungry and, mm-hmm. and what have you. And there's a lot of discussion and confusion and emotional responsiveness to the whole issue of legalizing marijuana mm-hmm. because of the, the impact, the potential impact on uh, the drug market, the medical market, the criminal market, all these things. Is it a gateway drug? But what we're talking about is something totally different, and we want to go through and try to present the case and make the distinctions because there are uh, there is research that shows positive gain from taking CBD across a spectrum of, of categories of issues, mm-hmm. uh, behavioral issues, neurological issues, muscular issues uh, that people suffer from, and especially as they get older, suffer more and more from. So. Yeah. So we're going to talk so about that. We're today. going to talk about that. Yeah. And and CBD is as we said not from the same sex plant. Right. It is from a different hemp plant than THC. So we have to make sure that that really rang true with me to say these are separate actual plants that are that have a separate secretion or sep- they contain a separate entity that do opposite things. So CBD is very opposite to THC. And that's very common in, in plants. Often we see that they one part of the plant does the opposite of what, what uh, another part of the plant does, like leaves versus, uh, leaves versus roots. So we want to make that distinction because we don't want you to lump it into CBD, into something that would cause addiction. It doesn't. In mm-hmm. fact... We use it to prevent addiction. It's, it is the opposite of what THC is. Whether some people believe THC is addictive or not is still under question. However, people who use THC do tend to need THC to fill some of the neurotransmitters in their brain so that they feel normal. The bad part is it also makes them unmotivated and unlikely to go to class, unlikely to go to work, makes them so makes them very hungry and causes them to eat junk. Well, our bodies naturally make a substance called endocannabinoids. These yes. are endogenous. That's where endo comes from, which means they are created within. And as we are younger, uh, when we're younger, our body makes what we need. And as mm-hmm. we age, along with so many other things like hormones, it makes fewer and fewer endocannabinoids, mm-hmm. but our body is uh, replete with receptor sites, both in the brain and throughout the body, bone tissues, nerve tissues, uh, with receptor sites for cannabinoids. Mm-hmm. And so if we take the plant version mm-hmm. orally under the tongue with, with uh, the CBD, CBD of CBD, then it restores uh, what our body's not generating. Right. It, it provides us with what our body is used mm-hmm. to having and needs and works positively for us in so many domains. And if we don't have it, we have a lot of symptoms right. like insomnia and aches and pains and many of the symptoms that are also uh, attributed to low testosterone. Mm-hmm. And part of that t- 
testosterone does stimulate endocannabinoid production in our bodies, but okay. sometimes it's not enough. Mm -hmm. So we have to use a supplement to give us enough. So our bodies are giving us symptoms to let us know that we don't have enough of something. That's what symptoms are all about. They're a warning to us. And the challenge has been to find what provides that, what, mm -hmm. what will replicate what we need so that we don't have the symptoms. This is such an amazing substance that uh -huh. I had very little knowledge of before. Um, Dr. De Silva, who is one of the great researchers, was speaking at a conference we went to recently, and he gave us every scientific backup and we aren't going to do that to you. <laughs> but but he gave us every research article and every different neurotransmitter and receptor and how they work exactly. We're going to give you the overview. Mm -hmm. But this is such a one-stop shop for making you feel better as you get older. And I'm and let me rephrase this. Some people who are stressed or have gone through chemo or have had a lot of terror terrifying treatments from medicines that have really stressed out their bodies or even abuse actually use up their endocannabinoids. Mm -hmm. So they need this earlier. So I'm not saying that this is just for old age and all the aches and pains and, and de depression and, and uh, weight gain and that type of thing that happens as we get older. It can happen to younger people too under the right circumstances. So this is one of those circumstances where you can use it for all ages. And it and doesn't safely. have negative side effects. No, it doesn't, which is just it's amazing. Not, it's not addictive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cause something else to fall off the rails and go right. bad. So there are no identified negative side effects to CBDs. The biggest problem is that you can't find or you won't know what a real effective CBD oil is mm -hmm. because there's lots of them on the Internet. Versus one that is really effective. You may they, it may be water or oil or you know you don't have a way of measuring that when you get it home after you pay for it. So you may say, well, this isn't doing anything for me. And it well, may not. And it may not. And be. it may not be because it may not have the dose that it says it has. So there's a, there's a question of the active ingredients and how much do you need to be effective. And the presentation that Dr. De Silva made focused extensively on the fact that there's a lot of marketing of CBD products on the internet. You can buy them. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know what's in them. They have CBD in them, but then they have fillers and volume maintainers and mm -hmm. liquids and so on added to the CBD. Other oils. So the, the way, if you're, if you're intrigued by this and you want to explore whether or not it would be beneficial for you, is you need to find a place to get what they call medical grade. Medical grade is sold only to doctors. Dr. Mothman bought some at the convention that we went to after hearing this presentation to, to try it and see and, and offer some to our patients to see if they agreed with the experience as, as being beneficial. And they actually verified that she was a physician before they would sell it to her. Right. So it, it is only available at physician's offices. It is not prescription. You don't need a prescription, yeah. but you need to buy it from a doctor. So it's called, uh, the company is called Med7. And this is not necessarily commercial. We're not getting anything for it, except that we bought it and we like it. Uh, hemp CBD oil. And this is just a sample size. The regular size comes in a lar larger bottle and it has its own dropper. So it's a twice a day kind of um, medication. Take it in the morning and you take it before bed or in the evening. But it helps sleep. But it also helps you stay alert, which is amazing because it, it it really works on the center for day and night where we kind of get confused when we stay up. All, we, we may work at night. We may stay up late. We may have the TV on all night that messes our day and nights up. This kind of helps sort it out in your brain so that how does it know? I don't know why it helps us. It helps us be more effective and active and have our brain work better during the day. But it helps us relax, sleep deeply at night, and then clean out our brains. One of the things that it does, which is kind of interesting because it helps us think more clearly, but one of the things it does is it helps us forget details we don't need to think about. And if you've ever had just your brain cluttered with stuff, and when you wake up and you think, I, I can't sort this out, I don't even know what I'm supposed to start doing today, so I'm not going to do anything. Well, this is this helps sort that out. Yeah, it, mentally, if you're under stress generally in your life or your job at school, 
uh, the more stress that you are under, the more your brain seems to identify and focus on uh, minutia that's not relevant to the problem that you're mm-hmm. facing. And I don't know if any of you have ever had the experience of uh, when you're under a lot of stress, you have more nightmares. For one thing, you don't sleep as well. Uh, and, and for another, you wake up and, and maybe the first uh, commercial jingle you hear or the first song fragment that you hear, then it repeats through your head over and over mm-hmm. all day long. And you can't stop it. You say, I'm not going to sing that phrase again. And then you start singing mm-hmm. it again. Uh, this helps avoid that. And it helps get rid of the garbage that you accumulate in the course of the day. Before we started filming this morning, uh, Dr. Moffin was talking about uh, her mother-in-law. in law Who, as she aged, began to remember almost obsessively everything she'd eaten and, and everything she'd scheduled during the day. And all that was helpful for nothing i mean every she used to help us in the office doing yeah. paperwork so she'd come to work with me she'd remember every sign she saw on the way to the office every she she'd remember them later talking about them which was so not necessary well so those kind of things we usually when we're well can sort out and not think about that anymore and dismiss right. when your brain is working correctly. What and some of this so this is relative to a couple of things. It's relative to the endocannabinoids and the receptor sites in the brain and throughout the body, but it's also relative to the amount of sleep. The one hand washes the other, as they say. Uh, we have we did a podcast a few weeks back on the importance of sleep and the way that your brain rids itself during sleep at night of the toxins that are generated, the the byproduct, the trash that needs to be taken out Mm -hmm. by your body from your brain. And it drains out at night when you get a good night's sleep uh, and processes down and is eliminated with all the other toxin waste that comes out of your body. Cleans your hard drive. Uh, Yeah, it's exactly what it does. And you need that. And if you're not sleeping well as you age, this compounds the adverse effect of all the aging issues and illnesses Mm -hmm. that you have. And so the better you sleep, the healthier you're going to be, the more mentally alert you're going to be, and the more you're going to be able to clean out all the garbage mentally from your mind. So this helps us do that. It and does. Without, without sleeping pills. Yes, without sleeping Surprise. pills. Surprise. Without so sleeping pills. So endocannabinoids can help with that. Can, may I run through? Are you ready for yeah, me to talk about these? Yeah, Yes. So categories in which Dr. De Silva presented research data. He said there is data that shows neurologically cannabinoids help uh, with the experience, the ALS, neurologic diseases that are like ALS, Parkinson's, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, MS, uh, epilepsy, and Tourette's. Mm-hmm. So there is positive gain for sufferers from these in terms of limiting the severity of the impact. And though there, we Not don't a, have anything else right. that really fixes this yeah. or really slows it down. We try. We use medications to make people better, but. This is a very simple answer to help slow the process down of of um, the disease progression. And, and remember, it's not medical marijuana. It's not in that whole conversation. Oh. It is not marijuana. It's the male version of the plant. It's the hemp plant, and it's not addictive. And it doesn't have THC at all, and it helps avoid all of those political agenda arguments mm-hmm. about legalizing marijuana. So some many of the things that we give testosterone for, because testosterone helps prevent right. or helps slow down the progress of those diseases, but also um, AIDS and autoimmune diseases, diseases of the immune system. It, it stimulates T cells that come uh, from your uh, thymus, which is right behind your breastbone, and your thymus is getting smaller as you get older. Well, this stimulates the production of T white cells that kill cancers and can identify cancers and can de- identify bacteria and viruses. So by taking this, it stimulates your immune system. Whether it be too high, it brings it down. If it's too low, it brings it up, and it becomes normal. So it prevents people or it helps people with these diseases, but also with aging as our thymus gets smaller, it helps stimulate the thymus to continue to work, which is amazing and not not common for other supplements or other medications. Right. So, so another area where there's research to support is in the area of mood disorders mm-hmm. and behavior disorders. There is research that's, that recognizes a beneficial impact on anxiety, stress, OCD, PTSD, depression, ADD, ADHD, mm-hmm. all of those 
reactive kinds of emotional disorders or mood swings can be moderated some without additional medicines for which there are negative side effects by CBD. Many of these are related to neurotransmitters that are insufficient in our brain. Mm -hmm. So CBD works on more than the endocannabinoids. It also works on serotonin and dopamine. So if we don't have enough of those, then it helps stimulate mm -hmm. the production of those. That's how other drugs work. They, they don't help make the stimulation increase, but some of them stop the uh, degradation of serotonin. So after you make serotonin, it isn't reabsorbed. That's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. That's what that means. So you have more serotonin uh, between the two nerves so that it communicates longer. So that improves your mood. Here, CBD actually increases the production of it and the production of dopamine, which is our feel good, but it doesn't make us euphoric. It just makes us feel normal, like happy when we should be happy, not right. happy when we shouldn't be happy. Right. I mean, so, so basically it makes you normal, not over normal. It also has positive impacts on things like Crohn's disease, diabetes, nausea, uh, anorexia, appetite loss. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot to do with eating. And the eating desire disorders. for eating and mm -hmm. eating disorders or eating discomforts as you age that you may suffer from. And there is research, which Dr. De Silva presented mm -hmm. and which you have available, uh, that says there are positive outcomes from taking this CBD oil. And food addictions, mm -hmm. like eating too much all the time or always eating because you're nervous. It helps that as well. The um, infertility was also mentioned. <laughs> yeah. And that's... It's kind of a universal panacea. Right, of making us normal. Right. I mean, at, and he, he also said this, that part of the reason this is such an issue and the part of the reason that people are looking for drugs and, and is because we have nothing to help them with that is really making them normal. We give them antidepressants, which give them other side effects. We give them antipsychotics, give them other side effects. But, but we don't have anything really that fixes their problem. So they look elsewhere to drugs. Well, that uh, leads to the whole addictive spectrum. Right. So that's all, that's, we have a huge addiction problem. Part of that is that medicine hasn't figured out the real answer to this. And I'm not saying that this isn't the answer, but it decreases the craving for something to make their br people's brain feel better. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those preventive and treatment methods for addictions. It isn't everything, but it is something, especially if you feel like you're addicted to something, maybe it's food, maybe it's, I don't know, one of the medications that you've been given and you feel like you need it all the time and it's not something you're going to get all the time or someone feels like it's dangerous, then maybe the CBD oil will be enough to make you not feel like you need that. Mm -hmm. The need or the craving goes away. Yeah. So so to me, that that kind of helps the whole problem of seeking out a treatment that no one is able to give you to make you feel better. The endocannabinoid receptors throughout your body, as your body ages and, produ and stops making the cannabinoids the way that it needs to, mm -hmm. those receptor sites are there available and hungry and they're screaming, feed me, feed me. Mm -hmm. So we try to feed them. And mm -hmm. that the theory is that's where some of the addictive behaviors come from. We're self-medicating to try to satisfy the hunger or the need that we feel uh, endogenously. That our body is saying, hey, I need something here. Give it to me. What, have you, if you've ever had, um, if you've ever been running long enough or biking long enough or exercising uh, aerobically long enough to get a runner's high, that is what endocannabinoids from your own brain uh, feels like. And if you've exercised as much as everybody else and you've never had a runner's high, you may be somebody who might benefit from additional CBD because your brain may be out or isn't making as much because of your age or because of stress or, or night work or night shifts. That may be a good sign, but obviously you have to run enough you know, you have to run miles to get that high. Right. That's why runners get, get the, the secondary the gain level. of yeah. running. Right. They, they feel great when it's over. I have never felt great after exercise. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel 
thank God I don't have to exercise till tomorrow, but I don't feel like, oh good, I feel so much better. I've never gotten that. So this is one of the signs that that he said, and, and we agree with, that would be a good measure of do you do you make enough endocannabinoid yourself? Do you need supplementation? Whether or not you get the runner's high. If right. You, if you naturally get it, then you may not need something as a supplement. Right. But if you don't get it, supplement might be helpful. That's right. So at the end of the day, what we're the reason we're having this conversation is we were intrigued by all the claims that were being made and by the data that was presented at the workshop. What we would say to you is if you are intrigued by this presentation, speak to your physician about it. Do some research online about CBD uh, and see if they would be willing to order medical grade because you have to be a physician in order to get this quality of product mm -hmm. from the manufacturers. Different, And there are different manufacturers. We're not advertising for anybody. Right. But then resell that to you. You can get it over the Internet all by yourself. But there are questions in about the viability and the value of the product that you're receiving because it, it's not a regulated market. Uh, it's not regulated by the FDA. It's not a non-prescription substance. So you don't really know what you're getting. So if you get it through a medically regulated or medically controlled system, mm -hmm. it has higher quality value. So, so look into it. See if you're interested. See what your doctor thinks and see if it will be beneficial uh, for you to take. Thanks for listening. We hope this helps you, especially if you have one of those diseases like Parkinson's or, yeah. or ALS. I mean, some of or these sleep diseases, disorders, or sleep anxiety, disorders. mood disorders, all, all those things that we talked about. And this is something that you don't have to have a prescription from yeah. for. or side effects. from. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.